All right, what's up, everybody? My name is LB The Realist. This is Surrealistic Studios, where the real is real. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. So, I don't know if this is necessarily a good thing or a bad. You know what? It's definitely a bad thing. You know, it's definitely a loss. Mignon Clyburn, uh, one of the FCC commissioners, is actually stepping down. She's stepping down. Do you ever get that itch in the back? That's just like you try to reach it from the top and your arm ain't long enough to quite get that spot. And you try to get it from the bottom and it ain't long enough to get that either. That's what I'm going through right now. Very irritating. Anyway, excuse me. So, I got this article I want to read to you guys from, I believe this is called Stan Cur Courier. Stan, oh, uh, I'm sorry. The Post and Courier, Paul Meadow Politics. Uh, Mignon Clyburn reflects on legacy as public interest champion at Federal Communications Commission. So, the recent prison riot that led to the deaths of seven inmates at Lee Correctional Institute in Bishop Bill through an issue that Mignon Clyburn has grappled with for years back into sharp focus. As the longest serving member of the Federal Communications Commission, Clyburn repeatedly faces questions about why the regulatory agency won't approve cell phone jamming technology in prisons to stop inmates from illicitly communicating with the outside world. Yeah, because that's crazy as shit. These people are supposed to be locked up and got more Facebook friends than I do. What kind of shit is that? <laughs> Where they do that at? Obviously in America. Uh, South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster and Prisons Director Brian Sterling partially attributed the Lee riot to lack of cell phone jamming and both have long fought for a change in the regulations. Clyburn, a Colombian native who became the first African-American woman to serve on the commission when President Barack Obama appointed her in 2009, approaches the issue with the same kind of nuance she sought to apply to a host of technology topics over the course of her eight-year tenure. We need to be extremely careful that we're taking a scalpel as opposed to a sledgehammer approach when it comes to these type of technologies and services, said Clyburn, whose father, Jim Clyburn, represents South Carolina in Congress. I didn't know that. Because if we don't strike the proper balance, not only will there not be service there, but those people around them might not have... Wait. Not only will there not be service there, but those people around them might not have service. But any role in fixing this issue or any other she has tackled in recent years will have come outside the commission. Clyburn announced last week she would be stepping down from the agency within a few weeks. And in addition, I'm sorry, in an interview with the Post and Courier at, at her Washington, D.C. office on the day she made her announcement, Clyburn said she had been thinking about leaving for some time. By the end of this year, term limit rules would have forced her out anyway. But the final decision announced during her commission hearing was spontaneous. I was not 100% sure when I woke up this morning that this was the day, she said, but I think it's the right time for me and it's a good time to have a reset to allow someone else to come in and pass that baton. I'm just hoping that it's somebody worthy of the title. Clyburn, 56, earned plaudits and public, I'm sorry, earned plaudits from public interest advocates for her approach to FCC issues. When she first not when she was first nominated, wait, I'm sorry. When she was first nominated, Gigi Son, who worked as an advisor for former FCC chairman Tom Wheeler, said many advocates in the public interest community were suspicious of her because she had previously been on South Carolina's Public Service Commission, which is tasked with regulating the state's utilities. Due to the powerful influence of AT&T in the Palmetto State, some, ob some observers feared Clyburn would only look out for the big telecommunications company. Well, that was wrong. From the get-go, she acknowledged uh, that suspicion and basically said, I'm, not go I'm going to prove you wrong, said Sohn, who is, now in a distinguished, who is now a distinguished fellow at the Georgetown Law Institute for Technology, Law, and Policy. I don't think she acted the way she acted or voted the way she voted to prove us all wrong, Sohn added. I think she's a person who cares deeply about vulnerable populations, the poor, the imprisoned, communities of color, and she really used her pulpit there to represent the, under, the underrepresented. Despite their disagreements over the years, executives from both, the nations, both of the nation's largest two telecommu uh, telecommunications companies, AT&T and Verizon, wished Clyburn the best when she announced her exit. 
Joan Marsh, Executive Vice President and Regulatory of Regulatory and State and External Affairs at AT&T, praised Clyburn's tremendous legacy at the Commission of Helping Americans Most in Need. Kathy Grillo, Senior Vice President and Deputy General Counsel of Verizon, described her as a passionate and effective advocate for the public interest. Let's see. Uh, net neutrality and prison phone rates. The, the most high-profile issue Clyburn dealt with during her time in office was net neutrality, which is the idea that Internet service providers should treat all websites and content in their system equally and not offer fast lanes for larger companies. Clyburn worked for years to, to uh, help develop national net neutrality rules that passed in 2015, but she ultimately ended up on the losing side of the issue when the new GOP majority undid the effort last year. When Ernesto Falcon, now the Legislative Counsel at Electronic Frontier Foundation, was working on the issue of reducing prison call rates for inmates' families years ago, he said Clyburn was enormously helpful in taking the fight to Congress and pushing for the change at the FCC. Clyburn was our champion, Falcon said. She cared deeply about this community of really powerless people. Like other issues, the FCC has changed course in, to end a cost cap on prison calls since the chairman since chairman Ajit Pai took over last year i'm very upset i'll just say about the direction we're heading clyburn said when you don't strike a balance usually the people who are on the losing end lose even more and that's my fear next step congress or should i say next step congress <laughs> is a question mark as the daughter of south carolina's lone democratic congressman jim clyburn of columbia Mignon Clyburn, Clyburn has often been viewed as a potential successor to her father on Capitol Hill. Her travel around South Carolina's sprawling 6th Congressional District, which stretches from Jasper County to Lake City and includes much of Columbia, further stokes speculation that she may be interested in an elected office in the future. Clyburn insists that that's not her first move on her mind. That's not the first move on her mind. Her 77-year-old father has not given any indication that he will step down soon, and she says she is initially more interested in applying her entrepreneurial spirit spirit to some of the issues she encountered at the FCC. But she won't rule out a possible congressional rule later down the line. While I can't say that that is something that I entertain on a regular basis, to be honest with you, I'm not taking anything off the table because I think that that would be limiting to me, she said. This is from the Post and Courier. I'll leave that in the description so you guys can check that out for yourselves. Again, Mignon Clyburn is officially stepping down in a couple of weeks, few weeks here. Um, she was on our side, if you were on the side of net neutrality and preserving our uh, internet protection. She was on our side, as along with Jessica Rosenworcel. Um, and they were the only two Democratic commissioners on the FCC, along with uh, the chairman, Ajit Pai, and... Um, I forget the other two gentlemen's names. Not important. The three uh, Republicans that fucked us on net neutrality. Um, so, yeah, I didn't know that her father was the lone Democratic uh, a, a congressman in South Carolina. That's crazy. That's crazy. But she says that she's going to continue this fight. Um, she mentions her entrepreneurial spirit. So we'll see where this goes. I honestly think it'd be a good idea to... Uh, to tweet at her so maybe i'll do that maybe i'll maybe i'll tweet at her and see if i can get her to do some kind of interview with tim black or something like that that would be fucking awesome um to get her thoughts and opinions on on such matters as net neutrality and what really goes on behind the scenes at the fcc and what kind of i, I guess what kind of situations does she encounter uh with agit pie and and the whole issue surrounding net neutrality and, and what that atmosphere was like. I, I'm really interested to know. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about this story. Like this video if you like. Share it if you like it even more. And subscribe if you love it. So I can keep bringing you stories like this. And again, remember love, peace, chicken grease, all that jazz. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Alright, keep fighting.